as a reminder that we don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. It's important then that we start changing the way we see things. If you say, I've got problems, that's not fair. They seem so insurmountable. Why not call them challenges? And if you feel overweight, sluggish, you look at yourself in the mirror as a fat failure, don't raise your hands. Is that productive? Is that positive? No, so why do it? We sabotage ourselves for success. Do you realize in the same predicament how cool it would be if we just stopped saying, I am a fat failure, and turn that around to seeing ourselves as someone who has been very successful at putting on weight? And realize we didn't gain all the weight in one day. We didn't just go to a doctor who put us on a dehydrated food diet for six months and one day we got caught in the rain. <laughs> wow, I gained 140 pounds in four minutes, man. This is ugly, doc. We all gained weight one pound at a time. We can lose weight one pound at a time. When you start talking about commit, it can't be about programs, can it? It can't be about all the technological terms. Come on. What if we allow technology to overrun us and you go to your doctor's office tomorrow and there's no human being? All you get is a recording. If your pain's below the waist, press one. Is that where we're headed? What if you're Catholic and they put the entire confessional system on voicemail? 1-800-FESS-UP. If you're into bigamy, press two. If you're worshiping the devil, press 666. Is that where we're headed? I certainly hope not. It's about people. I grew up in a very interesting home. I was the odd duck in my house. Can any of you relate? My dad, cotton farmer on the east side of Phoenix, Arizona, became very, very successful. In the early 1960s, he started his own insurance company, his own financial corporation, became very, very successful. Never an athlete, dark hair, dark eyes. My mother grew up in southern Idaho, the youngest of nine children raised by a single mom on a farm. Never an athlete, dark hair, dark eyes. My dad, insurance executive, an insurance guru, and I still to this day struggle with insurance. When I die, I want it to be a real tragedy. <laughs> and right now, I got about $6 million in insurance, and I can see my wife crying at my funeral saying, you know, I'd give any, probably $10,000 of it just to have him back. <laughs> so I didn't love what my dad did. I loved who my dad was. Played football for 13 years. My dad, still to the dying day, knew nothing about football. The only thing he knew about football is when the referee threw a penalty flag against the team I was playing on, he was dead wrong. That's all my dad needed to know about football. He wasn't a football fan. He was a Dan fan. I grew up in a tough home. They were all geniuses. My older brother, seven degrees from major universities. That's sick. <laughs> Father of four children, successful business owner, successful business operator, never an athlete, dark hair, dark eyes. Older sister, Deborah, graduated from the university in fashion, merchandise, and design, so she sells real estate. <laughs> Very successful, never an athlete, dark hair, dark eyes. Younger brother, Paul, MBA. Lives with his beautiful family in San Francisco. Hugely successful investment banker. Never an athlete, really dark hair, dark eyes. Then I come into the family, somewhere in between the other children, the only athlete, 6'5", blonde, blue eyes. Can you see my parents in a social setting? So uh, what does your son Dan do? Oh, he talks. We're so proud. Not only did my older brother have seven degrees from major universities, he was valedictorian of his seven universities, valedictorian of his high school, his valedictorian of the Blooming Nursery in the hospital. <laughs> I was not on the honor roll every time. One time I came home with a report card, had four Fs and one D on it. My dad's response, son, looks to me like you're spending too much time on one subject. <laughs> I love my dad. He gets it. I love to share with my audiences that my paralysis, my football injury, is clearly one of the very best things that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Don't misunderstand me. My accident wasn't one of the best things that's ever happened to me. But who I became as a man, what I learned about myself as a result of going through that setback, is clearly one of the best things that ever happened to me. 
Too many of us say, oh, I'm so stressed. No, we're not. If you start looking at it in the right way, remember things aren't as they are. They are as we are. Any of you multitaskers? What you just did is publicly admit that you're lousy at a lot of things. A juggler only controls the ball in his hand. He can't worry about the objects that he has up in the sky. Once the juggler relinquishes control, once the juggler lets go of the ball, he has relinquished control. So why worry about it? Until he catches it again and can control it for those few seconds or minutes or tasks or whatever the case may be, and then once we let go of the ball again, we've relinquished control. My 17-year-old daughter graduates from high school and announces to us that her and her beautiful, smart, amazing, talented friends are going to go to Laguna Beach for their senior party trip. Holy cow, I said, when are we going? Let me make the hotel arrangements. We had to let go and not stress and not worry. Realizing that when she was in our home, we could teach her to write, to make the right calls, to make the right decisions, to do the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do. Let us not worry about what we cannot control and only focus in on what we can control.